All right, welcome to the first episode of our podcast, Up on Foil, where we will talk about and talk to people who enjoy being on foil. I'm Matt, living in Switzerland. And I'm Gael, living in Cyprus from Italy. All right, now uh, we will have interesting people who are into foiling, whether it be pump foiling or wing foiling or any other sort of foiling on. We're going to have Gwen Le Tutor on, and I'm really looking forward to that. But um, let's just start by introducing ourselves. Maybe you can uh, share your story, God, in a couple of sentences. Yeah, for sure. So um, just a quick uh, introduction. I'm 21. I'm uh, probably younger than uh, everybody thought. <laughs> I got into pump foiling two years ago because um, after a trip to Mauritius, uh, I was completely in love with um, kiteboarding. And then I was uh, looking on YouTube uh, for ways to get into kiteboarding, uh, kite surfing, even though I was living in Italy in the mountains, like uh, 300 kilometer, uh, kilometers away from the sea. And uh, while I was scrolling on YouTube, uh, I, I stepped onto a wake video and I, I saw this guy surfing on a flat lake and I was like, okay, that's my thing. So uh, I, bought, uh, I bought a board uh, and a foil almost right away. Of course, it was a uh, complete the wrong gear. Uh, that's why it took me so long to, to actually <laughs> even get a foil. However, uh, that uh, inspired me and uh, that's why I actually started my journey on YouTube and I started sharing uh, my lessons, my uh, small tutorials uh, to help people out uh, in their painful journey. That's pretty much how I got into into painfulling. And for what concerns uh, what I do in my normal life, uh, uh, I'm running a content marketing agency. All right. I, I think it's great because you're from Italy, you have the Italian accent. I'm from Switzerland, I have a different sort of accent. So uh, <laughs> it's easy for people who just listen to us to distinguish whether it's you or me talking so that's great for sure that's for sure but tell me a little bit uh, about you i know that uh, you have kind of like a different background yes i'm um matt i'm older than you uh i'm 38 i think now and i was on the water pretty much my whole life i started sailing optimist this was this little uh, boat uh when i was six and i started to sail regattas was underwater all the time did a lot of windsurfing too as a kid and we went to Fuerteventura quite often in the Canary Islands and uh, I saw the kiters and I thought no I'm a windsurfer I'm gonna stick with that and then suddenly I thought well you know I just keep I, I should try it at least once and I tried it and it was super fun but I was always a little bit scared uh, of the kite it being that far away and I saw some horrible crashes but I still did it and it was fun I also did some kite foiling a bit but it took a while to realize that you don't have to lean into the kite but you have to stand on the foil and just it's more that, that flow state so that took a while till I got that and then I saw the wing foilers and I thought well, that looks stupid <laughs> <laughs> but of course I wanted to try it as well and tried it one afternoon as I as I already knew um kite foiling it was super easy like they had me go out on a uh, surfboard with the wing and I only had two hours of time and I was like come on I really want to get on foil now so after like 100 meters on the surfboard they gave me the wing foil gear and I, I started foiling immediately and it was super easy and I thought that's my life now I'm going to be on foil all the time but in Switzerland as you know there's often there's often there's just no wind so what to do then? I don't know. It was probably the wave. Uh, wave thief, is it called? Wake thief? Wake thief, yeah. I saw his videos too and I thought, well, I'm never going to be able to do that. And then a friend of mine, Babel, I'm going to have him on as well. He's a Kai Foiler, cool guy. Uh, his dad is from Finland. And he said, come on, let's try that pump foiling thing. And I just used my, my old wing front uh, foil, the aluminum mast and his kite foil board. And we just went at it and... I was super scared at first to hit my head and whatnot. And then I started watching videos. I started in February. And you can imagine February in Switzerland. Oof. It was five, eight degrees with the seven millimeter wetsuit. But I enjoyed it so much that I really had to, to buy the gear, man. I, I stay with the, with the wing foil front wing, with the fat one uh, for long because of money. It's super expensive, everything. But then I... I think it was your video talking about the Clubber 80 and I thought, well, that's just, that's a nice price. And he said that it's okay. So yeah, I got into it even more and it's super because now I don't even need wind to get on foil and I just, I just need to go on the water all the time as much yeah. as possible. Yeah, that's the thing. 
And uh, you mentioned that you were scared of hitting your uh, head on the dock. And on that note, we can introduce the topic of uh, this episode, which is... Wow. Wow. What a segue, <laughs> man. That wasn't planned. That should have been planned. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So uh, the first time you went on, on, on the pump foil, what did you yeah. wear? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> my board shorts. My, uh, my, my same Harley board shorts that I'm, that I'm wearing since uh, three years. No, yeah, of course, um, this is not like how you do it. Uh, it's super dangerous. I mean, I don't want to say that uh, the sport itself uh, is super dangerous. It is dangerous uh, if you start with the wrong material, with the wrong mindset, with the wrong uh, process, like r learning process, and of course, uh, absolutely without um, gear. I remember that uh, the first month uh, I risked uh, hitting my head uh, on the dock because uh, more often than not, uh, since you're scared at the beginning, uh, um, you are not uh, jumping forward because you don't trust yeah, the lift terrible. of the board. So yeah. you, <laughs> you, you, land, uh, you land your feet um, towards the, uh, the back of the, uh, of the board. So the board just take off and you slip back and you risk uh, hitting your head on the dock. And that's probably one of the most uh, dangerous uh, injuries that you can get uh, uh, pump foiling. And then uh, luckily I didn't uh, hit the dock, but uh, I had um, a good amount of uh, scratches uh, due to falling on the foil. And that's another point that maybe we'll discuss uh, later during the video. But um, I wanted to to ask you, how did you start? Because yes, you, uh, you had this uh, very thick uh, wetsuit and that uh, for sure helps, but what else? Yes, and I didn't use it as a safety issue because the, the very first time I went pump foiling um, was on the lake of Thun in the end of February uh, around my birthday. My wife uh, gave me as a, as a present to go on this sauna boat with some friends. So it is like a, a little motorboat raft sort of thing with a sauna on top. And the other guy, Pavel, came with me and he said, all right, we have to gonna try pump foiling because we have our gear now and uh, we're going to be hot from the sauna and it's going to be fine. So really, it, there was no way to put the board somewhere. We just put it out there and tried to jump. And <laughs> so it was pretty scary. I actually... I think I used my helmet though, because from kiting, I had like this water helmet. It's a little too big. It moves all the time. It's terrible. But at least I had that and that gave me some sort of security. I've never used it though. So I've never bumped my head while wing falling or kite falling or pump falling. But it gives you that sort of security still. Yeah. And um, on that note, <laughs> uh, I remember that uh, when we went together to um, Bielbien, uh, yeah. Luckily, um, Bud Müller joined us. He was uh, wearing uh, board shorts. Yes, he was wearing a uh, lycra, a uh, um, yeah, uh, very very thin uh, wetsuit. But he was wearing a helmet. So even he, all the time, he, even though he's uh, one of the best uh, wing foilers, pump foilers, uh, and whatnot uh, in the entire world, he was wearing a helmet. That's something that uh, it's admirable. And I thought uh, he's right. Like. He has a daughter, he's a father, he's a husband, uh, uh, he's a public figure. So why risking if you can just uh, prevent it uh, with a helmet? So I really, really yes. admire that and uh, it made me think a lot. Now, I don't have a daughter yet, but uh, it really made me, made me think. <laughs> I went, actually, I went after that, when, when we saw him, I went to check online how much that helmet costs and it's not that expensive, it's like 120 bucks. Yeah. And it's probably a comfortable... Uh, helmet because mine is too big it's heavy maybe it was cheaper but not that much and if you have a comfortable helmet then why not yes of course if we compare it to your area it's probably rather warm so you're probably happy to 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 be without anything just your bathing suit but in switzerland as you remember even in summer the water is not too warm so if you fall in you're happy to wear a little something yeah yeah and the thing is that if you're scratching yourself, uh, like worst case scenario, you have to put, put some stitches. Like uh, it's very hard that uh, pump foiling, uh, you're doing something worse than stitches. Like, okay, if it's a uh, uh, wing foiling, if uh, uh, high speed is involved, then uh, yes, you might uh, cut yourself uh, deeper. But with pump foiling, uh, you can prevent scratches uh, with these uh, wetsuits uh, uh, or even with a uh, uh, anti-cut um, t-shirt. Uh, but uh, the head, it's a problem because uh, you can hit your head.
head on the dock. And if you hit your head, it might go way worse than just uh, than just uh, some stitches. Yes, but. You had to get stitches, right? Another segue. Come on, let's, let's tell us your story <laughs> Ooh, about when, we're killing when you get it stitches. With... That looks terrible. <laughs> with these transitions, we are killing it. Yeah. Extremely however... <laughs> cool. <laughs> however, yeah, um, that's that's another point. You know, we mentioned that um, we need uh, the right gear, we need uh, the right learning process, and uh, we need not to be stubborn. And uh, well, in that session. Uh, at Nisi Beach, one of the most beautiful beaches in Cyprus, uh, I was stubborn. I was using the wrong gear. I didn't wear protections. I was tired. And uh, I was just trying to... So it was my second time beach starting. And I was like, yeah, last session, it took me only two two hours. And then I was able to uh, beach start uh, four times. So this time I'm going to use uh, a faster foil, right? Because then I want to ride those waves. And so I did. Uh, I got my smaller foil. It was not super, super small. It was uh, a bit smaller than um, than the one that I had. But another thing was that uh, the beach in that second session was flatter because uh, it was um, less wavy. So the foreshore was um, more gradual. So I needed to run more to in, in order for uh, the water to, to get deeper. So I was like more than an hour in the session. And uh, I just uh, did a stupid thing. So first of all, um, we need to take breaks because if we don't take breaks between attempts, then we are getting tired. We are, we are, we are getting mentally fatigued, and we increases uh, uh, we increase drastically the chances of uh, getting injured. And um, for what concerns the beach start, it's even worse because when you're dock starting, you're you make an attempt, then you fall, then you have to swim back, come back up on the dock, and then you can make another trial. Between trials, uh, we can say that uh, one or two minutes uh, elapses. But when you're beach starting, you can literally make uh, probably three attempts per minute. So you made the calculations, uh, and uh, after uh, one hour of attempts, uh, you are dead because uh, uh, you're also running. So it's even more energy demanding. The long story short, I was uh, I was tired. I was uh, frustrated. So I jumped on the board. I was on the board. I was on foil. But I knew that I didn't have enough speed to keep going. Uh, my brain was uh, switched off, so I just uh, stayed on the board uh, until the board uh, stalled. The front wing hit the seabed, the foil turned like 180 degrees, and then uh, I just fell on the foil. And then, uh, thanks thanks God, or thanks uh, Gael, I don't know, <laughs> I, had, um, I put my, my hands down. So I had two choices. Either put my hands down, but I was falling with my head right on the step. And uh, instead, I just put my forearm in front of me to protect my face. Uh, my arms were probably not long enough to protect my head from the stab because the stab was like probably 40 to 50 centimeter, uh, centimeters um, uh, above the water. So yeah, I just put my, my forearm and... Uh, that's the deepest cut uh, that I made. And then uh, I don't know how I also got my back uh, uh, with the front wing. That was a less deep cut. The worst scar is uh, on my back because uh, I didn't actually then use, uh, use the sunscreen after that. So yeah, not, not uh, again, ideal. But yeah, that's pretty much the story. And uh, what you can learn from that, just uh, don't be stubborn. Follow the step-by-step -step process. Watch our videos so that uh, uh, you know the right step-by-step -step process to follow. Yeah, use the right gear. Don't be don't be cocky. Well, let's just talk about these uh, the gear, the safety gear you can buy. We talked about helmets. Of course, if you bump your head, that's not good, obviously. But now with your story, a helmet would have not helped. But what might have helped was this non-scratch fabric, these non-scratch shirts. What do you think? They're non-cut, anti-cut. Sure. Yeah, what are they called? Anti-cut t-shirts. Yeah, I think that they're calling them anti-cut t-shirts. Yes, exactly. Uh, for sure, that would uh, have uh, helped a lot. Uh, but even just like uh, a lycra, a lycra, whatever it's called, uh, uh, a very thin wetsuit uh, would have uh, helped, really. I don't think I would have uh, avoided uh, the cut uh, on my forearm with anything, but uh, probably the cut uh, on my back... Uh, uh, I would have been able to, to avoid it, yeah. Because the, the advantage of these anti-cut shirts, and I'm probably going to buy one too for next year, 
um, is not only it helps against these, and, and I mean, the stabs, they are, they're daggers. They're so extremely sharp. You can cut your cucumber, obviously, but you can cut anything, really. And if you have uh, these anti-cut shirts, it's against the cuts, but also against the sun. And I mean, if you're out there, especially you, it's probably nicer, better weather in Cyprus. You're in the sun all the time. You're in the water all the time. And the sunscreen is going to be washed off. You can use the best sunscreen. It, it won't work for a long time. So that's probably just a good idea to get one of these shirts, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's it. It's so light. Uh, uh, it, doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get heavy. Um, even if it's wet, uh, uh, it can really save you a trip to the hospital. So it's, it's probably a good investment to, to invest a hundred bucks uh, and, and get one. The only thing is that uh, there are a few brands right now that are actually producing this kind of uh, shirts. Yeah, I've seen, well, I write Gong, as you know, and uh, I'm just looking at their stuff. And what is it? A little more than a hundred bucks? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not, it's not that, uh, that expensive. Or because if we have a look at uh, the fabric itself, uh, the fabric uh, alone is quite expensive. So it's understandable that uh, the price is not uh, the price of a normal T-shirt. Um, but yeah, I would I would love to to see more brands uh, uh, coming out with um, new new shirts. Or maybe I'm gonna make. I I, I really thought about uh, making one. I was uh, I was about to buy. The, the the samples yeah i was about to call the to to, bo to buy the samples uh, to to see if uh i could uh try to to make something and then hire my grandmother nice <laughs> to make t-shirts but then you then you stopped yeah yeah i had uh other things going on the agency and stuff uh, so i kind oh. of uh, aborted the um, the idea but uh that's probably something that uh it's quite a good you know a foil accessories for a foil accessory brand why not plus if you don't use it um, against cutting yourself, you can also save your wetsuit because if you fall on your foil, it's gonna it's gonna cut the the wetsuit very quickly. But if you can stop that already, then it's a good investment, I think. For sure. Did you ever cut yourself? Uh, did you ever heard about someone cutting uh, himself? Uh, did you ever yes, cut well, your wetsuit? No, never. I've <laughs> I'm gonna knock on wood, but uh, no, I have never had that problem. But um, my sister-in-law actually uh, went pump foiling, or at least she wanted to just get on the belly and see how how she moves. And um, when she was swimming out to the raft, I probably didn't mention that, or I didn't mention it enough to her that she has to swim behind or way in front of uh, the gear. And she kind of walked next to it, and she kicked the stab with her foot, and it was like a, a centimeter. Uh, wide hole but the water just entered the the top part of her foot and she had to get stitches and couldn't go swimming for another week so that was that was terrible and uh there was another guy a friend of mine fabio he wanted to try it and he's super sporty and uh he has a mop and he knows how to foil and just he just wanted to get on foil so I told him, well, just stand up to the front if you really want to go and uh, fall to the front. And uh, we can talk about uh, these practices later on, too. But obviously, at a certain point, he fell and he kind of tried to to stop the fall with his hands. And he, he cut he got a pretty deep cut uh, on his little finger. Um, it was not that bad. Could have been worse. I mean, if you have your stab near your face or in your face and there's the helmet won't help then it's that's that's going to be a trip to the hospital with yeah. a plastic surgeon that's not going to be good you can, you can just cut your nose right yeah cut off your nose fun. that's not fun and i'm always scared my son doesn't want to pump foil at the moment because i tell these horror stories <laughs> yeah again we don't <laughs> want to scare people because uh if you follow the instructions if you follow the steps uh, it's not it's not more dangerous than other sports. Come on, again, speed is not involved. So once you're up, once you're away from the dock, there are very, very few ways that you can get injured with, right? So um, you mentioned um, about uh, the, the adjustments that you can make uh, in your technique uh, to prevent injuries. Now, in my opinion, one of the best ways uh, to prevent injuries is uh, keep your hands on the board. 
Now, we know that we have to make the distinction between uh, drop starting and dock starting. So drop starting is when you throw the board from a high dock and then you jump on it. Do you like that? I like that start because it's um, easier to start uh, smaller foils. It's easier for maybe um, not too young people because maybe they don't have a huge uh, mobility uh, anymore. It's in general easier to generate speed, although it's a bit harder to get the fit placement right. However, that's dangerous because uh, there, there isn't really a predictable way to keep your head uh, far from the dock. On the other hand, yeah. if you're about to practice in the dock start and you keep your hands on the board all the time until your feet are nicely placed on the board, on the pad, at that point, uh, it's very hard to get injured because listen, if you really have your hands on the board, then the board acts uh, as a shield between you, your body and the foil. So even if you slip, even if you fall uh, backwards, even if you fall uh, in front uh, or on the side, uh, still, you always have uh, the foil far away from you. Plus, you keep your hand on the rail, right? Yeah. It's before standing up, really. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. For me, honestly, the drop start, I'm still a bit scared of the drop start because even though I know how to throw the board, I think sometimes it moves a bit different and you chart you start jumping before the board is in place so this part of a second is uh, a bit scary still for me yeah yeah it's not probably super super predictable i mean as predictable as the dog start and uh yes it's a bit more more scary yeah because uh it's, it's not natural. Come on, you have to jump or on nothing. And then uh, and there is actually something. And I want to mention uh, another thing for what's concerned the uh, drop start, which is not uh, necessarily related uh, to, uh, to, to, to safety. But um, I know that you have a, quite a big uh, foil with a good low-end uh, lift. And uh, in my opinion, with such a big foil, drop start is harder. So when you land... Uh, on the board, you're transferring a ton of momentum on the board, right? Yeah. But uh, if you have a ton of momentum and a ton of lift, then uh, it's really harder to handle all these forces and to go on rather than, uh, you know, just uh, running and then uh, um, stepping on the board. What do you think? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think if you have a smaller one, it's also easier to correct if you don't exactly have the feet where they need to be. But you know, it's it's just about sending it, and I'm usually I'm I'm not the person that takes risks a lot, so I'm I'm pretty uh, defensive where uh, concerning risks, and uh, I still try it every once in a while. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes there's just no other way to start and to drop start. But um, I tried the Yvonne's reverse start as well, and for me it doesn't matter which one I do. It's just always this momentum. All right. Focus and then, and then just send it. Yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah, but I haven't hurt myself yet. It's just uh, I mean the red the red part of the skin when you fall on your back. That's okay. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've seen uh, the way you you start uh, and you're pretty sharp. Uh, you're almost like a cat, so you're pretty gentle and you're always keeping your hands uh, on the board until uh, your feet are nicely placed on it. Uh, so. I can I can understand why you didn't get injured because uh, as you say the, you you're not taking huge risks and uh, you're using the proper technique so I can get Plus, why I'm not flexible people always say well I'm not flexible enough I cannot touch the f the, the floor with my hand when my legs are straightened so I'm not flexible so it's just you know you you had this uh, this videos where you show the the, the dry training the, the training on land right yeah yeah. I've made a bunch of videos, uh, uh, two quite recently. Uh, one, I, I talk about uh, stretching, how important stretching it is. Uh, if, you're not, uh, if you're not able to uh, easily run and then step on the board uh, from a low dock, uh, then uh, that's probably um, a mobility problem. And uh, you can solve it uh, just by stretch. Just by stretching uh, on a daily basis, uh, you, can, uh, you can solve that problem. And uh, stretching it's so, is so beneficial in so many areas uh, of life. Uh, besides uh, uh, pump foiling. And then yes, land training is fundamental to prevent injuries because uh, you can practice uh, the fit placement uh, before actually getting on the board. And uh, you can practice it in a safe, uh, controlled environment, your couch, like uh, this Bose ball that I used uh, in, in the last uh, land training video that I did. So that's another way to 
uh, prevent injuries. What I usually tell my friends um, when they really want to go on uh, and, and get on the feet, that if they feel like they start falling, they just they should just go with it. Like you, you tilt to the left, all right, it's over. Just fall to the left and it's going to be fine. Or try to kick your board away while jumping the other direction. But don't try to stay on as long as possible because as soon as, yeah, you're, you're done, you're done. I totally agree. I, I would have avoided uh, my stitches if I would have followed uh, this rule that you just uh, mentioned. So don't try to save the impossible and uh, just eject. When, uh, when you see that uh, the, it's, it's not a good launch and uh, be true to yourself, you know, if it's a bad launch, you know it from the f- very first moment. So just uh, eject, abort it. Yeah, totally agree. And also what I think is important that you don't make shortcuts. If you look at the other ones, they're super good and you just started, don't do the same as they do. Just go over your routine, try to go step by step. They're a bunch, they're super cool videos, how to do it. And uh, just follow simple steps. Maybe we can just, or you have you have this uh, pump foil guide. Maybe you can tell our listeners uh, what that is and where they can find it because yeah. it's a super guide, step by step, really. Just go one step after the other, right? Let me, let me pitch my free pump foil guide. <laughs> you can go on my Instagram account or on my YouTube videos and uh, in the description or in the bio, you'll find this link and you can uh, download, uh, get access and then download uh, this document, which is nicely organized. So it's super easy to, you know, find what you need exactly. So you don't necessarily have to read the uh, all the 60, 70 pages. I don't remember how much, uh, <laughs> how much text uh, I, I threw there. But anyway, uh, yeah. And in there, I really, really spent uh, quite a good amount of uh, time uh, explaining what, in my opinion, is the best step-by-step process that you have to follow if you want to learn faster, avoid struggling, I mean, struggle, struggling less, struggle less, and uh, prevent injuries. Because uh, if you follow the steps, it's just gonna be, everything is gonna be easier. And let's be honest, it, it is a struggle. But that's the beauty. I think so too, I think so too, but some people might think like, it looks cool, I wanna do it, I wanna do it now. And honestly, as I did some kite foiling, I knew wing, foil, wing foiling, I thought, it's going to be a breeze. I'm just going to step on the board and how hard can it really be? And it was hard, really hard. And I thought, and a friend of mine, uh, Cody Eisenhut, he's going to be on the podcast as well. Uh, he, he was, a, he's a pro kiter or he used to be a pro kiter, a uh, kite foiler. And he did more or less the same thing. He thought it's going to be easy. And he improved faster than other ones would, but it still takes time. Even though you're on foil, you know how it works. It's For more sure. difficult. Yeah, yeah. I see a lot of uh, wing foilers. Uh, yeah, I know how to pump. It's going to be super easy. No, it's not. Because maybe you know how to pump, but then uh, you don't have anything in your hands. And then still, you have to generate that speed. Uh, while at least uh, when you're up on foil, you generated that speed with the wing. To wrap everything up. So tell me, tell me. Go I ahead. would add something else if I, if I might. Because the safety for yourself is, is one thing. But... Um, there are usually where you pump, there might be swimmers, there might be other pump foilers. So I think it's super important, important also to just don't go too close to swimmers. If someone's swimming near you, just don't go. For sure, for sure. Uh, you actually made me remember uh, an experience that they had uh, this Saturday. I went uh, um, on a very beautiful beach here in Cyprus and I was uh, trying to beach start and then uh, it wasn't really the right beach. Uh, so I just rock started. And then um, I, w- I, I know what I'm doing uh, at, right now. And I was uh, kind of, uh, I was keeping a good distance between the foil and the swimmers. Uh, but still, a lifeguard just uh, approached me and uh, kindly uh, asked me to, to not foil uh, anymore there because he was scared that I would uh, cut other people. So, yeah, especially if you're not fully in control of your ride yet, uh, just stay away of other people. A friend of mine uh, told me the story, Nick. He was uh, in Hiltefingen, Lake Thun, and he just started and went, and then suddenly in front of him, he saw air bubbles. So there was actually someone swimming or diving for about 20 meters from the other side of the, of, of the area, and he just dove underneath, and he didn't hit him, but I mean, if you hit someone on speed with your foil, I mean, that's going to be super dangerous. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's not fun. Yeah. How about wave thieving? I mean, that's another security thing. Here in Switzerland, we have the rule that we cannot approach boats um, closer than I think 50 meter it is. Mm. And they're super nervous too. But I say, if you just, if you don't go next to them, but a little bit behind them, nothing's ever going to happen because they cannot break that fast. You're going to fall before yeah. they break. And uh, yeah. that shouldn't be a problem, really. Yeah, no, I I don't think it's, I don't think it's actually possible that uh, you get sucked by the um, the propellers uh, or again, if you're like five to 10 meters uh, away from the boats, from the propellers, uh, then you shouldn't really be, be worried about. I mean, just look at, pe do look, look at people who are um, wakeboarding. They are super close to the boat, right? Okay, maybe the boat doesn't have propellers. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Maybe they have this uh, hydro something. <laughs> Just like jet skis, no, I'm, I'm not sure. But you can still be on the platform on the back. But something else I think that might be interesting because you went uh, downwinding a bit with your uh, pump foil gear, right? Yeah. And I saw you had your uh, your goggles oh, yeah. and your snorkel with you. Was that a safety thing as well? or? <laughs> yeah, so that, here's the there? thing. Here's the thing. I, I, I already got uh, quite a good amount of uh, comments. Uh, uh, what are you doing with the goggles? Uh, you, you're, you're, are you stupid? So here's the thing. Uh, can I do what I want, first of all? <laughs> and the second thing is, sure. is this one. I don't have a big board. I don't know how, how to wing foil yet. I, I don't know how to downwind foil, uh, like uh, get up uh, with a paddle. I don't have a, a surfboard to uh, prom foil with. And uh, I don't have an impact vest. So, and I'm a decent swimmer and I like uh, open water swimming. So I said, okay, I'm going to combine, combine the two things. So I got kind of like a, a small leash. I'm going to get a, a waist leash just because if I fall far out, I want to be able to attach my foil to myself. And maybe I can keep my um, mask, my dive mask, or even just swimming, uh, swimming goggles around my neck. And I can just swim. Well, I have my little chill swim uh, back to the dock. I just invented a new sport, which is called uh, um, pump pump downwind foil uh, open uh, water swimming. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yes, you need. I thought you need when goggles. I saw when I saw it, I thought it was to to put a camera here or something. And then I saw it was goggles, and actually, I thought um, I don't know what they're called in uh, in in Switzerland or in German. They're called um, sea hedgehogs, you know, these, uh, these balls with the spikes all around, these animals. And I thought it was when you wanted to exit that you don't step on one of those. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the reasons are many too. First of all, uh, it's, it's just easier to swim. If you have goggles, it's just easier to swim back. And then uh, that place is incredibly rocky, super rocky. Like even if you're far out and then suddenly you can see... Uh, a rock uh, almost uh, at the surface level that you would uh, probably even hit with your foil, right? So I wanted to at least uh, be able to see a bit what's underneath so that uh, uh, I can protect my foil because uh, still I'm dragging my foil behind me. I'm holding my foil uh, um, like between my, my arm and my trunk or maybe I'm zooming, uh, I'm paddling on the foil. So I want to be able to watch underneath me so that I'm not uh, um, scratching my foil for no reasons. So, so yeah, and uh, yeah, they they were useful. My goggles uh, were useful. Nice, very nice. And uh, maybe it's just also so people comment on your videos, uh, which is always good, obviously. Of course, <laughs> of course. All right, do you have any anything else to add? Safety, uh, safety wise, there isn't anything that uh, is coming to my mind right now. Um, so yeah, I think that we could uh, wrap everything up. We discussed about helmets. By the way, we didn't mention uh, these uh, soft helmets because uh, if you're not, uh, if you really think that it's so uncomfortable to wear a uh, hard plastic or carbon helmet, uh, then you can get one of these uh, um, soft kind of uh, helmets that uh, came out just probably recently, and um, you almost don't feel feel uh, feel it on your head, and uh, it does the job. For what concerns the impact vest, um, um, I've never wore one, <laughs> but um, I honestly personally believe that uh, it's not that important uh, when it comes to pump foiling because uh, yes you can hit the dock uh, with your trunk but uh, it's pretty unlikely 
And uh, even if you fall uh, on the foil, uh, you don't have a, a huge speed. So you fall on the foil, yes, but uh, scratches are actually the main uh, uh, danger. I used, when I started, I used uh, just a regular life vest, but it was because the water was five, six degrees. And I thought if I hit anything or if I cramp up or anything, at least I'll float and they can like go pull me in. So that's why I used one. So helmets, um, impact vest if you want, or or just life jacket, anti-cut shirt we talked about, and uh, maybe shoes or uh, uh, neoprene socks so you don't scratch. Yeah. So you scratch a little less. Yeah, we forgot. Uh, we forgot to mention that again. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be super quick. But uh, I mainly rock starting here in Cyprus, and um, yeah, you need you. I every like I could. I could remove my socks right now and show you my feet, but that's probably not gonna be <laughs> YouTube friendly. <laughs> Maybe some or, other times. If you want but, that, leave that in the comments, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you want my feet, uh, I I can even open an OnlyFans or this kind of things that uh, are viral right now. Sure. sure. <laughs> Maybe I can make money <laughs> more than than I'm doing now with my YouTube channel. <laughs> But um, but yeah, um, I'm always uh, uh, scratching my feet, and uh, that will be super easy to avoid uh, with uh, even just some neoprene socks, super cheap neoprene socks. But I like the feeling of uh, the rocks uh, hurting me. <laughs> but yeah, yes, that it's, it's just it's just cheap. Thing. You can just buy these socks or even these um, uh, barefoot shoes that a lot of pros are using. Uh, Yvonne, uh, Seb Suji. They are all you wearing these uh, these shoes, and uh, there should be a reason, right? If they're doing it. Mm. But the anti cut shirt, I'm I'm gonna get one for sure. That's something that I'm really gonna yeah gonna buy. Yeah. Not just for not scratching myself or cutting myself, but also against the sun. I think that's for really sure. a good thing. For sure. And it's probably and then, sometimes even more comfortable. Sorry, than a, than a lycra. You know, uh, it's kind of looser, so you, you, it's not necessarily compressing you. So yeah, it's yeah. just a good solution. Good. And then. Speaking about like the strategies, the the, the technical technical side, don't let go of your board. Jump too much to the front, if anything. And yeah, don't hit your head. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Just... You're gonna you're gonna leave a link to your palm foil guy down there, right? So for sure. For see. sure. For sure. Um, I'm just gonna tell uh, what we're gonna talk about in the next episode, which we're gonna record pretty soon. Um, it's, it's been a while already, actually, now, like one and a half weeks ago. There was a Swiss Pump World Championship in Wingels, which is close to Biel, where we were. And uh, the organizer, Griku Christian Müller, he uh, is going to talk to us about that, about his, uh, his project, because he has a lot of more projects. And he's a really cool guy. And we're going to talk to him um, tomorrow. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm really looking forward nice. to it, because uh, honestly, I didn't even wear aware of the existence of, uh, of the existence uh, of this uh, contest so um, i'm really looking forward to that all right cool well then uh see you guys in the next one and i will see you tomorrow <laughs> yes <laughs>